Welcome back to this Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play. Yoth Sambo and Seraphis Thrawn, our Marauder. And if you were with us in our last episode, you'll know that we got through the very beginning of the game in terms of the character creation, looking at the races, looking at the classes, and we ended up here in, well, I think it's called Uldar, I believe. Let's have a look at the map. Where are we? Uldar, indeed. And if you uh, remembered last time, I was saying that I don't know this city at all. It's still true. I have no clue. In fact, I don't even know if we're actually in the city proper yet. I think we're still... Pretty sure we're still in some kind of um, like you know beginner instant starting zone. We're not out into the real world yet, so we can't meet up with our special guest. But one way we can check probably is um, opening the main menu. Now we'll go through the UI elements as they come up. I won't spend a lot of time going over it up front. Down the bottom here, we've got four little icons. We went through them last time. This one here brings up the main menu. Now what I like to do is assign that to my Q key on the keyboard. Now a lot of people play Final Fantasy XIV with a controller. A lot of people plug their PS3 or Xbox controller into the computer. And by the way, the game plays very well on a controller. Uh, I'm playing it with a standard mouse and keyboard though. And I assign Q to the main menu. It's just right there next to the WASD and it's just easy to get to. Um, one thing you will notice a lot in the game, and let's see if I can get it into a dark spot, there we go. Right up the top here you see a funny little icon, it's like an exclamation mark in a speech bubble. Whenever you see that, that means that there's interactions available. Uh, now they are somewhere either around you that you can interact with an object or something you can do on yourself or somebody else. So if you click it, it actually brings up um, the main menu and you'll see up the top here I've got a list of interactions and in this case it's just one which is stand. So I can make myself stand up uh, by using that interaction there. What I want to do is I want to go to the journal. Now there's a whole bunch of things here, we'll go through them over time. But for now I just want to go straight to the journal. The journal is effectively your quest log if you're used to other MMOs. Um, where are we? Yeah, here we go. Uh, and at the top is a filter. You can filter uh, all the quests that you currently have. Um, quests and leave quests, and we'll, we'll explain what they are later. Here we have main scenario quests. We've got side quests. It's quite good actually for organizing yourself. And in this case, we're a marauder. There can be some specific marauder specific uh, quests. So in other words, class specific quests. And you can see here by this list, you can see how many classes there are in the game. And we'll just go through them quickly. There's the Gladiator, the Pugilist, the Marauder, the Lancer and the Archer, which are all your sort of warrior fighting type classes. Uh, we've got the two uh, mage classes, the Conjurer and the Thaumaturge, if that's how you say it. Um, then we've got some um, production classes, so uh, Disciples of the Hand in other words. We've got uh, Carpenters, Blacksmith, Armourer, Goldsmith and a leather worker and a weaver and a alchemist and culinarian. Then you've got things like mining, uh, botany and fishing. So there's all sorts of gathering and production quests. All different. Uh, how many is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It looks like there's 17 classes available in the game. So there's a whole bunch. Anyway, what I want to do is go to our current quests and have a look at this. You just click on it and it'll tell you what it's about. So what does it say there? A mysterious dreamlike voice recalls you from your reverie. You, uh, your senses about you, you find that you've arrived in Uldar. Uh, now you need only speak to whomever you wish and seek out adventure wherever it lies. Now if I click on the map button, this is a really cool thing. It shows you um, like specific things related to that quest on the map. So if we click that, uh, let's have a look. Ah, okay. Well there's the answer to my question. Are we in a special area? Yes we are because you can see there's a whole bunch of question marks up here. There is actually no map. So we're definitely in a special zone. So I'm guessing that we're not actually out in the real world yet. Um, so let's do what it says and talk to people. Now to interact with um, things in the game, it's very simple. In fact, it's too simple. A lot of people uh, don't get it. Oh, look at that. You can see the sun setting. We're getting this red tinge on everything. Seriously, folks, it's the most beautiful game. You can't tell from here because it looks very simple and plain in this stone courtyard. But once you get outside, we'll get to some um, different architecture. That, seriously, the game is outstanding. It's, in fact, it's jaw-dropping is what it is. But in other words, uh, this isn't the best example, but we will see uh, later on. Now, to select stuff, you basically click on things. It's very simple. If I want to select myself, I just click on myself. Uh, if I click on myself again, it brings up my action bar. 
and it's the same if you um, select somebody and uh, like um, Rift if you remember if you've been watching my Rift Let's Play series when you click on someone you'll see that your head actually turns to follow them so if we click on this person over here you can see her head follows all the little details like that very cool you just click anywhere in the world to get rid of the selected target um, click on them once and it shows you here uh, the target we can move this down a bit so we've got more screen real estate and that's how you select something you click once on it to interact with something you click on it again and like I said if I do that on myself um, it actually brings up this action bar here and we'll get into that later and how you assign things on there and you can see right away I've got one attack already which is a light swing attack with your axe dealing uh, slashing damage it's going to be a very basic attack I guess um, just explain the UI elements down the bottom here very simple you got your hit points um, you've got mana points and you've got TP I can't remember what TP is I'm trying to remember now I can't remember what that stands for but what I do know is that it builds up over time so it's kind of like a special in other words the more combat you do um, this bar builds up and obviously some uh, abilities actually require TP so it's a way of limiting your very very powerful um, abilities kind of like the supercharge cost in DC Universe Online for example um, so here you can see I've got 543 hit points that's quite a lot uh, and 114 mana or energy or whatever you want to call it now if we hit Q uh, go to our attributes screen here we go it may actually tell us what those are called maybe I'm not sure but we can see here we've got um, yeah so the TP goes up to 3000 we've got zero of it at the moment um, we've got strength vitality dexterity etc etc it tells you what your attack and defense and magic potencies are and also you have a whole lot of elements here and again we'll get into that later on but they've got stats assigned to them accuracy evasion and magic accuracy so um, melee accuracy and magic accuracy are actually different uh, we've got our skills here it says that we are a that's all our what is that marauder we've got one skill so these are icons of all the classes here because remembering like I said at the very beginning of the last episode there are no fixed classes in this game well there are there's 17 of them but um, actually how many are 1, 2, 3, 4 times 4, 16, 17, 18, 19 sorry I got my numbers wrong um, you, you actually can swap to any of them at any time just by equipping the weapon of that class or the equipment of that class if you're a cook or um, a gatherer or something like that but you can see here that there's a 1 next to the marauder symbol so we've got one skill in the marauder um, class section and we go to the actions and traits screen and we can see it actually here this is where you actually assign skills to your hotbar and in this case we've just got the one uh, we'll get into that later on uh, what else can I show you um, our gear this is what the gear screen looks like we've got slots here and when you uh, click on one you can actually swap them out it has all their stats over here um, and again we'll get into that much later on you can take gear off um, you just literally uh, click on it <coughs> excuse me whoops wait a minute it's been a while isn't it I think withered bandana yeah there we go you click on it to um, unequip it so there we go there you can see our spiky hair, hair and our ears um, if you want to put it on you just click in the slot choose from the list what you want and there it is we're now wearing the hat and it actually says down here um, in the chat menu that it's now been equipped and it uh, also showed us when it was unequipped as well um, now somewhere here we can also maybe if we get rid of the menus pretty sure we can resize there we go we can resize this we might make it just a little bit bigger so we can see the text there we go and you've got a combat log obviously you can click on the word say there and it brings up your different channels you got say shout tell party link shell which is a guild in this game chat log uh, which is nice and you can change the colors etc etc pretty basic and look at that you can see the shadows changing as it turns to night in the night sky there the stars coming out the lighting is all changed it's all very pretty um, right so what we're we doing oh that's right we we're talking about selections um, oh and point uh, allotment this here is where you build your uh, attribute stats so as you can see I've got none to spend but you do get points to spend as you do quests and as you level up and you can put them wherever you like into things like strength dexterity intelligence and that sort of stuff and also your elemental uh, points as well. well get into that much later on we can hear some wolves in the background there good lord anyhow let's get rid of that screen um, to select somebody we click on them uh, oh one more thing down the bottom here it tells us our class and our rank 
so we're a marauder rank one now you level up all your different classes when and how you like so you could be a marauder rank 10 but a fisherman rank one or vice versa doesn't matter and you've also got a physical level so the difference being that the marauder um, is a rank that ranks up your class and of course that is specific to the class that you're uh, currently utilizing at the time and it says there we've got zero out of 570 um, XP points for that but your physical level is sort of it it transcends over your class so we've got zero out of 2700 there that physical level will continue to level up um, irrelevant of the class in other words we might get halfway through physical level one as a marauder Later on the game we may choose to become, I don't know, some kind of mage or a, uh, a cook or something like that. As we do stuff in that particular um, uh, class, uh, as we fight monsters and all the rest of it, our physical level will still go up. So we may gain the rest of physical level 1 and get to level 2 um, as a different class. So I hope that made sense. It'll make sense as we uh, get through the game. So, once again, click on something and then click on it again. So let's click on this person click on them again to interact with them whoops and they start talking so it says there's a hamlet nearby I'm trying to reach might there be somewhere my coin could find a chocobo to see me there you just click on them again uh, to either dismiss it or to cycle through the various um, texts so we won't read everything obviously but we do need to talk to people because we're trying to figure out what we need to do no, I missed the fireworks. Just talking about fireworks. Who else can we talk to? Let's just follow the trail of people, shall we? A fretful farmhand. So they're just giving us some uh, flavour conversation at the moment. No actual quests have popped up. Surely you didn't come all this way to watch the festivities alone. Perhaps we could enjoy some of the festivities of our own. Goodness me, I'm happy to take your arm and more for a time. You deserve a proper welcome to you all da fair lady that you are. Um, I can please you as well as any man. Though from the looks of it, you don't have the coin. Uh, a shame that. Mm. Okay, so she's obviously a lover of the ladies. Very cool armor though. I mean, you can see there. Let's see if I can zoom in close enough without it disappearing. For example, the stitching on her arm there, you can see the individual metal rivets around the stitching holes. Um, you can see the thread in the cap. It's just absolutely amazing. Really cool stuff. Really beautifully designed, like all Final Fantasy games. The architecture, the layout, the clothing, the class, everything is just top notch. Piece of advice. Alright. I won't read all of these out because we're just trying to move on. Parade's about to begin shortly, eh? Interesting. And here's our cute little Makoti people. They are so gorgeous, seriously. Like I say, once you see them moving around in the game under player control, they're just amazing. If you like cutesy little cute things, that is the race for you, trust me. Alright, so it looks like we're being funneled down into this courtyard here, and we can see on our mini-map um, that there's an exclamation point there. Um, there's all sorts of icons showing us what is about, what facilities are around, uh, what buildings are around, what inns and, you know, shops and all that sort of stuff. But there's an exclamation mark. You may not be able to see it on the mini-map. Duty calls. Do you wish to proceed? Oh, yes. Now, I'll show you what this is about. Hopefully it's going to port us back in. Yes it will. Alright, so first of all let's move the mini-map down a bit and across so it's taking up less real estate. There we go. Whenever you sort of go through an instance area it comes up and gives you the option. That's so that if you walk into somewhere that you're not meant to you can back out like we just do. Duty calls. Do you wish to proceed with Flowers for All? Now you might say what's Flowers for All? I think that's actually the name of the quest. So it's going to be like an instanced area. Probably a cutscene of some sort I'd say. So like I say, you always get an option to back out of those in the game. Uh, and for some reason they're taking a while to load, so it must be because we're at the beginning of the game, they're going to be fairly hefty cutscenes. Come 
Christmas for all. Enjoy the festivities. What kept you? The parade is about to begin. Make ready. Now. You got it, boss. Leave it to me. I won't let nothing go wrong. Take it as a precaution. Oh, I, uh, uh... Let us go. Flowers do grow in the desert. Goodness me, looks like we're possibly going to be in battle. Uh oh. Engage the enemy by entering active mode. Alright, so this is our first sort of combat tutorial, I guess. And you can see down the bottom here we've got two party members with us. Um, now, I can't remember what the symbol above our head means. I, I wish I could. We'll get there eventually, folks, I guess. But anyway, oh. It's that possibly. What does that mean? Help. That's what it is. All right, let's click help. And it scrolls some stuff down the bottom here. There are two basic action modes. When your weapon is sheathed, you are said to be in passive mode. And when it's drawn, you are in active mode. You might remember earlier we looked up and it's F. That's what we want. We want to put ourselves... There we are. You're now in active mode. Target the enemy and select an attack command. So all we need to do is click on the enemy. And you see that it's come up down here. The escaped gooboo, if you like. Uh, it says there the axe becomes an extension of your body and we click them again and you see that the target there shifts to an actual target we've got a stamina gauge here as well which we'll talk to you about in a minute and we have a light swing so what's going to happen is start the battle it says 
whoops, it's zooming on the mount. Start the battle by using your gamepad or mouse to fix the target cursor onto the escape gobu. Um, while many of the creatures are docile, some are known to attack without provocation. Fortunately, uh, the gobu before you does not appear to be one of them. So that's good. But look at the graphics. I don't know if you can see that on the YouTube video, but it's absolutely incredible. It, it looks like a rendered cutscene. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, it says here, each type of attack has a specific range of effectiveness. Blah. The distance between you and the target, as well as the direction you're facing, combined to determine whether or not you will be able to land an attack. So that's important. You have to be facing. You have to be within the right distance. And you've got this stamina gauge here. Um, basically, as you fight, you'll see this gauge going up and down. Um, attacks actually take um, stamina. You can see when... Whoa! It's going to go right through us. Incredible looking. If I hover over the um, light swing here, you'll see it actually comes up over the stamina gauge there. You can see it popping up. Maybe not. Um, and we have to manage that as well. So it's like an active time battle in other Final Fantasy games. You have to wait for it to build up before you can actually attack. So let's try anyway, see what happens. Here we go, and you saw it go down a little bit and then come up again. You've engaged the enemy in combat. Its name is now Red. So we can keep basically attacking. Now I'm just clicking on one here. And we've got a critical there. We can actually just hit one on our keypad. Another critical. And we can keep going as long as there is stamina. Now, of course, it's very simple with these um, early times because we've only got one attack. And the monster's not actually fighting us back. One thing you may have noticed there is as I move around, because I've got it, because I've basically clicked twice on that monster, I'm going to continually face it. So I can get behind it, for example, and then hit one. And you'll see that there it says the target is too far away. So if I get in closer, I might be able to attack it from behind. Yes, we can. Let's do it again. We can just keep spamming it uh, if you like. But like I said, while we've got that targeted, we're always going to be running around it with it in sight. So it's like a lock-on. So if I was to click away from it, now we're back in free form mode. So it's important to know that because if you need to get away from something when you're in a battle, you actually need to click off the enemy. Now, while it's got one click on it like that, it's okay. But two, if I do it again, you see now we're going to basically be stuck on it. Let's attack it some more. And there we go. We obtained something. And we automatically go out of combat mode. We'll have a look in our inventory later to see what dropped off that. No doubt there'll be another epic cutscene as we get pulled through the story in these beginning episodes. Damn thing seemed rather taken with me. Any idea why that might be? And now our guest requests an encore. Come on! Let's go! You all right, boss? What did I miss?
And of course, as always, absolutely gorgeous uh, cutscenes. Absolutely fantastic. Right, where are we now? Maybe we're out in the town for proper, for real, are we? Uh, let's see if that's us. Well, that is us. So we've got a little um, gold arrow there. Let's have a look in our journal. That'll um, tell us for sure. Hit Q to bring that up. Actually, let's have a look at our inventory. See what it was that we got. Did we get crystals, no loot, no items. Oh, maybe whatever it was, we didn't get to keep because it was... Oh, well, I don't know why, actually, to be honest. Huh, weird. Never mind. Let's have a look at our journal. Have a look at this. Flowers for all. You managed to subdue the monster, basically. Oh, we got a quest item. That's what it was. For Villa Diner Cosmos. Uh, and this is the other cool thing about the quests in Final Fantasy. Because it's so lore-driven, because it's so story-driven, it does keep you up to date. So even if you don't play for ages or you go off doing other things, you can always come back here and read through uh, what happened before leading up to where you are now. Uh, so it says, The townspeople return to enjoying themselves at the festivities in the wake of the excitement. Speak to others around you to discover how an adventure might go about getting her bearings in this city. Uh, whoops, actually what I wanted to do was bring up the map for that quest to see if it brings up the proper map. It does, it does, so I think we may now be out into the world proper. We'll soon find out. We've got an exclamation mark here, let's talk to this person. Are you injured? No. Might I offer a guide? Offer to guide you to the Adventurer's Guild, the quicksand it's called. It isn't far. Ah, okay. So the Adventurer's Guild is basically like a, it's like an inn in other games, and it's a hub where you pick up a whole bunch of quests. If that is the case, then that's definitely where we need to go, because that means it's in the real world. Um, yes, by all means, guide us to the quicksand. So rather than me running there, actually I probably should have run there so I could get my bearings. It's probably going to teleport me there straight away, which is a bit of a cheats way of doing it. I would have actually pre preferred to have uh, run around, but anyway, I'm sure we'll find our way. So she's saying her name's Mamodi, um, if it please you, and it's my stock and trade to help out green adventurers such as ourselves. <laughs> the language is funny in this. Though I oft think I'm pissing my life away in the doing, you wanderlusting types, naught but a mind to travel the world round and see all there is to see, has you. Gosh, it's kind of like old English language. She's saying let's make sure we're prepared. Um, Wealth, fame, and glory is all here for the taking. That's good. And this is someone come along to introduce themselves. Most call me Thancred, he says. Interesting. Of course, he was the person that was uh, helping us out at the fair when the monster broke loose. So he's presented her with a very rare flower. And she's saying that some folks seem to think it was the Galeans behind that rampaging beast at the parade. He's saying he's going to stay here for a while. <clears throat> And it looks like we are in the world proper, perhaps. Although I don't see any other players around. Now, I must say that the architecture, whilst it's very cool, obviously, um, is nothing like I'm used to in Gridania, or Gridania, or however you say it. Uh, that's if I am in the world proper. I might still be in some kind of starting zone, maybe. These desks look, look very empty. 
So maybe I am still in some kind of single player instance rather than actually out in the real world. It's hard to tell. These guys are just giving me a general chatter. So let's talk to our quest person. Small talk. Alright, so I think we need to do the quest which is caught in the sands. Alright, so she's saying that there's only one thing we really need to know and that's how to fatten our pockets. And the first thing she's saying to do is joining a guild. says that we've got ourselves a rare little treasure which is the thing the item that we picked up when the monster died might well make you a tidy bit of corn let's have a look she says let's give it to her and she's giving it back to us all right so she's saying to us that we need to attune ourselves to the etherite at camp black brush She's saying we'll be glad we did head out of the gate of Nauld and keep going north. Now, that's something that we'll come across um, various camps around the place um, out in the wilderness. Well, they were in Gridania anyway, and they have these etherite crystals in the center of them. Basically, they serve a number of purposes. They're kind of like a hearthstone, number one, so you can attune yourself to one and always hearth back to it or teleport back to it. Um, and they also offer to serve quests, uh, leave quests, and we'll get into that later on. And you can also teleport between any one that you've previously been to. So it's like a really quick way of getting around. So we need to go to Camp Black, Black Brush and go north out the gate. Here I'll even mark it on the map. Oh, that's handy of her. Although it's got a bunch of question marks, so that didn't really help at all. And a link pearl. You can use it to contact me if you ever need a bit of advice. I'll show you what the link pearl is in a minute. Excuse me, it's telling us that a comprehensive log containing quest progress and objectives, key items, recipes, and more can be viewed within the journal. The journal can be accessed at any time via the main menu. Yep. The information that uh, Mamodi gave us is now saved in the journal. Access it at any time should you lose your way. Right, so we will have a look at that now. And we'll have a look at a couple of the other things. So, for example, the teleport system here. Um, what you do is you click on a particular region. And then within that is a bunch of sub-regions. Um, but at the moment we haven't been to any other areas. So it's not going to offer us any teleport locations. But it's very quick to get around. You don't have to run all over the place. Although you do have to run there in the first place. Let's bring up the menu again. Um, a link pearl, NPC link pearl. Basically, this is like a sort of oh, telepathic link with Mamodi, who's over there behind us. Wherever we are in the world, we can click on that link pearl and she'll tell us relevant things that we need to know. And of course, throughout the beginning of the game, it serves as a bit of a tutorial guide. So she's saying you've already worked how to, out how to use the link pearl. Uh, maybe we're not as stupid as they look. Be a brave lass now and make your way to the etherite at Clamp Camp black brush um, best way there takes you out through the gate of Nauld expect to run into some foul things beyond the city walls so I guess we've got to head north out this gate um, that'll do and let's have a look in the journal so there it is caught in the sands and yes Mamodi has urged us to venture forth to camp black brush brush rather wish I could talk properly and if you click on the map it should bring up a map showing you the relevant points now unfortunately we're not out in that world yet but you can see um, that we're down here in Uldar so what we will have to do is run up north and go up that path and we'll end up uh, in that area there which is where the camp is and by the way we should be able to no we can't zoom out can we 
No, but it looks like it's a very large world. It does, and I think it's desert as well, by the way. I'm not 100% sure. Alright, there we go. And I'm pretty sure we are out in the real world now, by the way, because... Yeah, here we go. So these are actual players. So here's some real players. And here's what I was talking about before. You can see if I zoom right in here or get close. Look at the quality of these uh, NPC, mo uh, not NPCs, player models. A lot of these um, items that they're wearing, they will have handcrafted um, and dyed. Um, so it's very rare that you see any two players look exactly the same. The customization options in terms of crafting are absolutely incredible. And you can see there, Unlike other games, like in mainstream games, uh, no two people look the same pretty much. Let's quickly see if any of these people have anything for us. Uh, a retainer, oh, I won't get into that yet, I'll tell you what they are later on. Latisse, what have you got to say for yourself? Just some general information. Look at these armors and look at the weapons, they're absolutely incredible. Um, now, one thing you do need to know, um, you'll see some people have all sorts of varying symbols above their heads. Ah, oh, we could spend all day just looking at the various armors. Amazing. Um, if anyone has a, like a little, looks like a, a backpack or a loot sack there. Oh, look, there's a little, cute little, little person. Where are they? They're so small, in fact, you can hardly see them. They're hidden behind there. <laughs> they are the most gorgeous things when you see them running around, by the way. But yeah, anyone that's got a symbol that looks like a bag of gold basically means that at any time you can actually do, you select them. And up here, remember, we've got our interactions menu. Click on that, and we can do a number of things when we click on somebody. We can check them, so that's basically like inspecting them, and that tells us that they're an alchemist rank 17. That's their current uh, equipped weapon and current selected class. We can have a look at their gear and whether or not it's um, been manufactured or not. In other words, whether or not it's been crafted. Um, and we can do a bunch of other things. We can um, browse. Let's have a look here. Um, so that there is their store. Now, I'll do that again. Again, we're looking at someone who's got that bag item. This person, uh, let's choose someone that doesn't have a bag. Oh, they've all got bags. No, Zelda here maybe doesn't. Yeah, so here we can trade, invite to party, and check. But if we uh, select somebody who's got this bag, we can actually yeah, use browse, and that actually browses their store. So in other words, what you can do is when you actually um, get an item in your backpack, you can either, of course, keep it and use it yourself, or you can basically set up a, a store. And rather than like other games where you set up a merchant and they clog up the game, um, it is actually on your character. So by having that little bag uh, icon there, it actually shows that you can um, click on a player and look at their store. For example, this person has a couple of eggs and they're being sold for 20,000 gil each. Let's have a look at someone else, Ashikin over here. We'll have a look at you, we'll click on your interactions, we'll browse your shop. Uh, what have they got? They've got some beeswax and an iron square. So that's some crafting material. Look at the little person running around. They've got some crafting materials up for sale and it's just a great way of making money uh, without having to go to the auction house. And yes, there is um, a semblance of an auction house in the game. We'll get into that much later. These guys normally offer leave quests and I'll talk about them much later on. I wonder if they offer them up now. Oh, they do. Guild leaves. Hang on, I'm just going to check the other person. Guild leaves for regional. Oh, yes, they do. Okay, so basically, there's some things that we can pick up here. Uh, we'll do that in the next episode because we've all gone way over time. Uh, we know that we need to head north, um, and we can tell on our mi mini map which way we're headed because there's kind of like a cone of light um, coming out in front of us. Now, like I said, I must say this city is is absolutely nowhere near as amazing as Gridania. Unfortunately, it's all very um, stone. I mean, I know it's meant to look like this. Um, oh, look at the armors. Absolutely incredible. Um, but it's much more beautiful in Gridania. Perhaps what we might do, we're going to stay here, of course. We're going to meet up with our friend. And we'll add her to our friends list and see if she's online at some point for our next episode. 
um, but what we will do at some point is I'll load up my other tune so you can actually see what it looks like in a really, really, really pretty environment. I mean, this is very nice, of course, but it's uh, keeping in style with that sort of um, English medieval look, whereas Gridania is, like I said, it's kind of like going to the house of Elrond, very elvish, very outdoors, very naturey, very pretty, um, whereas I wouldn't call this pretty. Anyhow, that's enough for us in this episode. Hopefully next time we'll be joined by, by a special guest. We'll pick up some quests, which are um, leave quests and guild leaves. Uh, we'll meet up with our friend and we'll head out into the big wide world. But of course, until then, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you've never seen Final Fantasy XI or Final Fantasy XIV, it may all seem a bit strange to you. Um, hopefully these series of um, Let's Plays will um, show you the game, what it's like, get deeper and deeper into it, and whether or not it's something you'd like to play. Um, but please stick around, join us for the next episode. And of course, until then, it's me, Sambo, saying take care, see you later, and bye-bye. Welcome back to this Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play. You're with Sambo and Seraphis Thrawn, our marauder. And if you were with us in our last episode, you'll know that we got through the very beginning of the game in terms of the character creation, looking at the races, looking at the classes, and we ended up here in, well, I think it's called Uldar, I believe. Let's have a look at the map. Where are we? Uldar, indeed, and if you uh, remembered last time I was saying that I don't know this city at all, it's still true, I have no clue. In fact, I don't even know if we're actually in the city proper yet. I think we're still, pretty sure we're still in some kind of, um, like, you know, beginner instant starting zone. We're not out into the real world yet, so we can't meet up with our special guest. But one way we can check, probably, is um, opening the main menu. Now, we'll go through the UI elements as they come up. I won't spend a lot of time going over it up front. Down the bottom here, we've got four little icons. We went through them last time. This one here brings up the main menu. Now, what I like to do is assign that to my Q key on the keyboard. Now, a lot of people play Final Fantasy XIV with a controller. A lot of people plug their PS3 or Xbox controller into the computer. And by the way, the game plays very well on a controller. Uh, I'm playing it with a standard mouse and keyboard, though, and I assign Q to the main menu. It's just right there next to the WASD, and it's just easy to get to. Um, one thing you will notice a lot in the game, and let's see if I can get it into a dark spot. There we go. Right up the top here, you see a funny little icon. It's like an exclamation mark in a speech bubble. Whenever you see that, that means that there's interactions available. Uh, now, they are somewhere either around you that you can interact with an object or something you can do on yourself or somebody else. So if you click it, it actually brings up um, the main menu and you'll see up the top here I've got a list of interactions and in this case it's just one which is stand. So I can make myself stand up uh, by using that interaction there. What I want to do is I want to go to the journal. Now, there's a whole bunch of things here. We'll go through them over time. But for now, I just want to go straight to the journal. The journal is effectively your quest log if you're used to other MMOs. Um, where are we? Yeah, here we go. Uh, and at the top is a filter. You can filter uh, all the quests that you currently have. Um, quests and leave quests, and we'll, we'll explain what they are later. Here we have a main scenario quests. We've got science later on. We can hear some wolves in the background there. Good lord. Anyhow, let's get rid of that screen. Um, to select somebody, we click on them. Uh, oh, one more thing down the bottom here. It tells us our class and our rank so we're a marauder rank one now you level up all your different classes when and how you like so you could be a marauder rank 10 but a fisherman rank one or vice versa doesn't matter and you've also got a physical level so the difference being that the marauder um, is a rank that ranks up your class and of course that is specific to the class that you're uh, currently utilizing at the time and it says there we've got zero out of 570 um, xp points for that but your physical level is sort of, it It transcends over your class. So we've got 0 out of 2700 there. That physical level will continue to level up um, irrelevant of the class. In other words, we might get halfway through physical level 1 as a marauder. Later on in the game, we may choose to become, I don't know, some kind of mage or a, uh, a cook or something like that. As we do stuff in that particular um, uh, class, uh, as we fight monsters and all the rest of it, our physical level will still go up. So we may gain the rest of physical level 1 and get to level 2 um, as a different class. So I hope that made sense. It'll make sense as we uh, get through the game. So, once again, click on something and then click on it again. So let's click on this person. Click on them again to interact with them. Whoops. 
and they start talking. So it says there's a hamlet nearby I'm trying to reach. Might there be somewhere my coin could find a chocobo to see me there? You just click on them again uh, to either dismiss it or to cycle through the various um, texts. So we won't read everything obviously, but we do need to talk to people because we're trying to figure out what we need to do. No, I missed the fireworks. She's talking about fireworks. Who else can we talk to? Let's just follow the trail of people, shall we? A fretful farmhand. So they're just giving us some uh, flavour conversation at the moment. No actual quests have popped up. Sure, you didn't come all this way to watch the festivities alone. Perhaps we could enjoy some of the festivities of our own. Goodness me, I'm happy to take your arm and more for a time. You deserve a proper welcome to you, all dar fair lady that you are. Side quests. It's quite good actually for organising yourself. And in this case, we're a marauder. There can be some specific marauder-specific uh, quests. So in other words, class-specific quests. And you can see here by this list, you can see how many classes there are in the game. And we'll just go through them quickly. There's the Gladiator, the Pugilist, the Marauder, the Lancer and the Archer, which are all your sort of warrior fighting type classes. Uh, we've got the two uh, mage classes, the Conjurer and the Thaumaturge, if that's how you say it. Um, then we've got some um, production classes, so uh, Disciples of the Hand, in other words. We've got uh, Carpenters, Blacksmith, Armourer, Goldsmith and a leather worker and a weaver and a alchemist and culinarian. Then you've got things like mining, uh, botany and fishing. So there's all sorts of gathering and production quests. All different. Uh, how many is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, it looks like there's 17 classes available in the game, so there's a whole bunch. Anyway, what I want to do is go to our current quests and have a look at this. You just click on it and it'll tell you what it's about. So, what does it say there? A mysterious dreamlike voice recalls you from your reverie. You, uh, your senses about you, you find that you've arrived in Uldar. Uh, now you need only speak to whomever you wish and seek out adventure wherever it lies. Now if I click on the map button, this is a really cool thing. It shows you... Um, like specific things related to that quest on the map. So if we click that, uh, let's have a look. Ah, okay. Well, there's the answer to my question. Are we in a special area? Yes, we are, because you can see there's a whole bunch of question marks up here. There is actually no map. So we're definitely in a special zone. So I'm guessing that we're not actually out in the real world yet. Um, so let's do what it says and talk to people. Now, to interact with um, things in the game, it's very simple. In fact, it's too simple. A lot of people uh, don't get it. Oh, look at that. You can see the sun setting. We're getting this red tinge on everything. Seriously, folks, it's the most beautiful game. You can't tell from here because it looks very simple and plain in this stone courtyard. But once you get outside, we'll get to some um, different architecture. That, seriously, the game is outstanding. It's, in fact, it's jaw-dropping is what it is. But in other words, uh, this isn't the best example, but we'll see uh, later on. Now, to select stuff, you basically click on things. It's very simple. If I want to select myself, I just click on myself. Uh, if I click on myself again, it brings up my action bar. And it's the same if you um, select somebody. And uh, like um, Rift, if you remember, if you've been watching my Rift Let's Play series, when you click on someone, you'll see that your head actually turns to follow them. So if we click on this person over here, you can see her head follows all the little details like that very cool you just click anywhere in the world to get rid of the selected target um, click on them once and it shows you here uh, the target we can move this down a bit so we've got more screen real estate and that's how you select something you click once on it to interact with something you click on it again and like I said if I do that on myself um, it actually brings up this action bar here and we'll get into that later and how you assign things on there and you can see right away I've got one attack already which is a light swing attack with your axe dealing uh, slashing damage it's going to be a very basic attack I guess um, just explain the UI elements down the bottom here very simple you got your hit points um, you've got mana points and you've got TP I can't remember what TP is I'm trying to remember now I can't remember what that stands for, but what I do know is that it builds up over time. So it's kind of like a special. In other words, the more combat you do, um, this bar builds up. And obviously some uh, abilities actually require TP. So it's a way of limiting your very, very powerful um, abilities. Kind of like the supercharge cost in DC Universe Online, for example. 
Um, so here you can see I've got 543 hit points, that's quite a lot, uh, and 114 mana or energy or whatever you want to call it. Now if we hit Q, uh, go to our attribute screen, here we go, it may actually tell us what those are called, maybe, I'm not sure, but we can see here we've got... Um, yeah, so the TP goes up to 3,000. We've got zero of it at the moment. Um, we've got strength, vitality, dexterity, etc., etc. It tells you what your attack and defense and magic potencies are. And also you have a whole lot of elements here. And again, we'll get into that later on, but they've got stats assigned to them. Accuracy, evasion, and magic accuracy. So um, melee accuracy and magic accuracy are actually different. Uh, we've got our skills here. It says that we are a... That's all our, what is that, Marauder, we've got one skill, so these are icons of all the classes here. Because remembering, like I said at the very beginning of the last episode, there are no fixed classes in this game. Well, there are, there's 17 of them, but, um, actually how many are, 1, 2, 3, 4, times 4, 16, 17, 18, 19, sorry, I got my numbers wrong. Um, you, you actually can swap to any of them at any time just by equipping the weapon of that class or the equipment of that class if you're a cook or um, a gatherer or something like that. But you can see here that there's a 1 next to the Marauder symbol, so we've got one skill in the Marauder um, class section. And we go to the Actions and Traits screen and we can see it actually here. This is where you actually assign skills to your hotbar. And in this case we've just got the 1. Uh, we'll get into that later on. Uh, what else can I show you? Um, our gear. This is what the gear screen looks like. We've got slots here. And when you uh, click on one, you can actually swap them out. It has all their stats over here. Um, and again, we'll get into that much later on. You can take gear off. Um, you just literally uh, click on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoops. Wait a minute. It's been a while, isn't it? I think. Withered bandana. Yeah, there we go. You click on it to um, unequip it. So there we go. There you can see our spiky hair, hair and our ears. Um, if you want to put it on, you just click in the slot, choose from the list what you want, and there it is. We're now wearing the hat. And it actually says down here um, in the chat menu that it's now been equipped, and it uh, also showed us when it was unequipped as well. Um, now somewhere here we can also, maybe if we get rid of the menus, pretty sure we can resize there we go we can resize this we might make it just a little bit bigger so we can see the text there we go and you've got a combat log obviously you can click on the word say there and it brings up your different channels you got say shout tell party link shell which is a guild in this game chat log uh, which is nice and you can change the colors etc etc pretty basic and look at that you can see the shadows changing as it turns to night in the night sky there, the stars are coming out, the lighting has all changed, it's all very pretty. Um, right, so what we're we doing, oh that's right, we we're talking about selections, um, oh, and point uh, allotment. This here is where you build your uh, attribute stats, so as you can see, I've got none to spend, but you do get points to spend as you do quests and as you level up, and you can put them wherever you like into things like strength, dexterity, intelligence, and that sort of stuff, and also your elemental uh, points as well, we'll get into that 